Good morning again. Um, well, you may be viewing this in the afternoon or evening, but it's morning here. Um, and I figure we're all in our homes. And so during this COVID period, maybe it's just an opportunity for me to put out these brief videos each day. Um, I want to talk today about the functions of apologetics, okay? So why do we actually do apologetics? What is the benefit of knowing how to defend the faith? Well, there are three reasons to engage in apologetics. The first, obviously, comes from the very name the definition of apologetics, the word in Greek, is apologia, and it means to give an answer. So when your neighbor comes and says to you, especially at this time, why are you so calm? Why are you not panicked? Why doesn't this frighten you? You know, so many people may die. You can answer their questions with the one true hope that we have. And in these lessons, I never want to forget that the hope is Christ has conquered death. He has slain the great enemy of all people. Death was an intrusion into the Garden of Eden. And Christ conquered and destroyed death. He alone has risen again, in his own body, a glorified body, but nevertheless, the same body that he was incarnate in is the body he rose again. And that gives us as Christians the only answer of true hope. And if we die, as I've heard it said uh, uh, so many times now, Lutherans don't fear death. Why? Because Christ conquered it. We keep our eyes upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross and the shame, and has risen again, so that we too may rise with him. And, in fact, we have risen with him through the holy waters of baptism, as Paul tells us in Romans, that just as he was buried, we were buried in those waters. And just as he has risen, we rise because of the forgiveness of sins God has given us in our holy baptism. So, first reason is to answer questions. Those who are really wanting to know an answer. Okay, The second is to defend against accusations against Christianity. During the time of Rome, um, they called Christians atheists because we refused to worship Caesar as God. You would have to go and say, Caesar is Lord. And Christians would not do that because Caesar is not Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. So they called us atheists. So there were many um, early church fathers who defended the Christian faith against the accusation that we were atheists. And we do the same now. Uh, we defend against those who are atheists for the hope that is within us. We defend the faith against those who say, well, you're just believing a fairy tale. Fairy tales aren't grounded in fact, sir or ma'am. No, that's what we're doing, defending against accusations against the Christian faith. One popular one is, well, you think you're the only one with the truth. Well, let me ask you this. Did your guy rise from the dead on his own? Or rise from the dead by some other power? Or do you go visit his tomb? Do you go and mourn the day of his death still? Do you remember the day he died? See, because Christians, every week, every single week, 
on the first day of the week, we remember his resurrection, that Jesus rose again from the dead. I know the Easter tradition is to say uh, he is risen in greeting and then he is risen indeed in response, but perhaps we should be doing that every Sunday, saying to each other, he is risen, and then in response, the truth, he is risen indeed. Because why are we there on the first day of the week? Now, I know there are those who cannot be because of acts of mercy and other situations. Nevertheless, we remember the first day of the week being the day Jesus rose from the dead bodily, not as a ghost, not as a figment of imagination, or as Bishop Sprung would say, just this hope we have, but it's an empty hope. Oh no, it is far from an empty hope. It is a true hope. Anyway, now I get to the third reason to study. And I did not know this reason even existed until probably the second semester with Dr. John Warwick Montgomery when I was uh, earning my bachelor's at Trinity. And he said in one of his lectures, the reason Christians must engage in apologetics in both the defense of the faith and proclamation of the faith is for themselves. Oh, yes. Um, understanding our faith, digging into the Word of God, digging deeper into church history and the archaeological proofs that they keep digging up. They're always saying, oh, Christianity is wrong, Christianity is wrong. And then guess what? They end up finding out, oh no, even the history that is in the New Testament is correct. And even the things in the Old Testament, they keep digging and God keeps proving the writers of these accounts were correct. So for us believers to see that there really is solid documentary evidence by eyewitnesses of these events builds us up. It now because it's coming from the Word, it's going to build us in our faith. But because we see then the evidence and the proofs, our faith is strengthened. We begin to realize, well, the faith I have is not this fuzzy, cloudy, vapor-like thingy. Um, yeah, that's a technical theological term, thingy. Um, instead, our faith is founded on rock-solid proof. Our faith is a faith founded on fact. Not a myth. Not a made-up story. Not a fairy tale. It is founded on evidence and solid proof. And for believers, that builds us up. We begin to see that we have a hope that is sure. It is not something that comes and goes with every wind and can blow away. You can't blow away the fact that Jesus physically rose from the dead. So, the three reasons again. And let me first read to you what our faith is founded on. I am in Ephesians 20, ver uh, 2, verse 20. And it says, I'm going to go from 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. Okay, so we're founded on the prophets and apostles. That foundation. Jesus is the cornerstone, the most important piece. And without him, our faith means nothing. But with him, the prophets and apostles 
are that foundation connected to that cornerstone, which you must have in every solid building. And that's what our faith is founded on. Fact. So again, quick recap. Function of apologetics is to answer the questions of those really wanting to know why you believe, why you're not panicked during this time or any time of of trials and, and turmoil in this world, which Jesus said we were going to have in John, it is also to defend against the false accusations by unbelievers towards Christians. And it helps to build us up in the most holy faith. And so it is with that that I remind you that digging into God's Word will build you up and strengthen you during this time, during every time. Just because we're in turmoil right now and, and the world seems out of control, keep in mind, Jesus is in control. He conquered death. He destroyed sin, death, and the devil for us. And it is in that hope that I encourage you to go out and talk to your neighbors. Yes, space six feet apart. Talk to them. Love them. Do good towards them. They need your good works. God doesn't. But they also need to hear the gospel. So bring them the hope. The message of hope each one of us has. Your pastor may never speak to them. Because that's maybe never become inside that circle. So it's your responsibility to proclaim and defend the faith of Jesus Christ, which is built upon the holy apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Have a blessed day.